Hello coders and thanks for joining us with another Unity scripting tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about two scripting functions on trigger enter and on collision enter. Now the goal with this tutorial is simply to show you how you can use these two scripting functions in your games and the way I'm going to show you guys is by this little mini game I have set up where we're going to be shooting cannonballs through these rings to score points. Alright so let's get into it. So we're going to be dealing with two types of events, trigger events and collision events. Now trigger events are only sent if one of the colliders have a rigid body attached. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a cannonball shooting out of this little mortar or cannon or whatever. And this cannonball is going to have a, uh, it's going to have a sphere collider on it. It's also going to have a rigid body. Okay. And what's going to happen is it might hit one of these rings. Okay. So one of these rings might get hit by it. And if that's the case, we need to send a um, collision event. If the cannonball goes through the ring, we need to send a trigger event. And I'll, I'll talk about the difference between those two in a minute. So again, trigger events and collision events. And essentially, when you're dealing with triggers and collisions, remember that one of your uh, collider objects needs, needs to have a rigid body attached, okay? So at least one. All right. So what we're going to do uh, to start off is put rigid bodies on these rings. Okay. Now I said that we have a rigid body on the ball, but uh, I want to have a rigid body on the rings as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is come over to physics, add rigid body, and I don't want to use gravity on the rings because I want them to stay, stay suspended in the air. So I'm going to deselect use gravity and I'm going to deselect is kinematic. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna select is kinematic. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy this component onto the other rings. So copy and then paste. Go up to the last ring. Um, looks like that one already has one on it. Okay, let's see. Ring two. Okay, paste component. All right, so that covers that. Um, so now what should actually happen is when I shoot the ball the uh, or the cannonball it should hit these rings okay so let's go ahead and test to see if that works actually it's not going to work because we don't have a collider on the on the ring so another thing we need is a collider now let's check out what collider we could use for our rings uh, let's see so if we go to add component we go to physics okay so we need to choose from one of these colliders well we want the we want the cannonball to be able to go through the ring. We don't want it to stop going through the ring uh, when it hits the ring uh, open space. So only if it hits this outer part do we want the ball to collide with it. Okay. So how are we going to do this? A box collider won't work. A sphere collider won't work. Uh, a capsule collider, no. Let's try a mesh collider. I think a mesh collider will work because it'll adhere to the uh, to the natural polygon mesh of the model. So I'll choose a mesh collider and we're going to copy this component to the other rings. Okay. Now if I run this, I should be able to shoot cannonballs and they should hit the, uh, the outer edges of the rings if they don't go through the ring. So let's test to see if that works. Okay, so I think you guys can see that. So it hits the rings and sort of stops. And what I'm covering right now is discussed in a previous tutorial. If you if you want to learn about rigid bodies and you want to learn about colliders, go ahead and uh, check out that rigid bodies and colliders tutorial from our channel. Okay, so we have our uh, collider set up there. One thing that we're missing though is our ability to increase the player's score when we when we pass through one of these rings with our ball. Okay. Now the way we're going to achieve this is with a trigger collider. So I did mention before that we could have two colliders on one object. So what we're going to do is start off with this first ring. And what we want is a, a, a trigger collider. A trigger collider is essentially going to send a trigger event that says that something has entered this collider. Uh, and when that happens, we can run some actions such as increasing the player's score. So it would make sense for our trigger collider to be behind the ring so that we know that the ball has passed through it. Okay, so how do we set this up? Let's start by going to add component, physics, 
and we could use uh, pretty much any one of these colliders, but probably the one that I want to use is going to be a box collider because it encapsulates all the space evenly. Okay, and what I want to do with the, with the box collider is move it behind the ring. Okay, so what I can do is modify the Z position and you can see it moving behind the ring. So I know that, and, and, and don't forget with this, we need to set is trigger, okay? So again, is trigger, uh, just a brief overview. If it's is trigger and a collider runs into this trigger collider, so if the ball runs into this trigger collider, it's not going to stop. It's going to pass right through it. However, it will send a trigger event, so we can do something like increase the player score. Okay. So again, the reason that this is behind, okay, the reason that this collider is behind the ring is so that we know that the trigger event's only going to get called when the ball passes through the ring. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this on each one of our rings. I'm going to go to Add Component, Physics, and Box Collider. And I'm going to move it back behind the ring. Okay. And I'll go ahead and go up to the top ring here. Add Component, Physics, Box Collider. And I think I forgot to set these to trigger. Okay. Okay, so we have all of our triggers set up and we have our uh, rigid body set up. Okay, now I want to go ahead and show you guys what I was talking about. So what I'm going to do is look at this box collider that we originally had set to is trigger. I'm going to set that to not be is trigger and show you guys what happens. Okay, so if I shoot this ball through the ring, it'll actually stop when it hits the middle of the ring. Okay, now vice versa, if I take this and I set to is trigger, I should be able to pass the ball straight through the ring. Okay, so you guys can see it goes right through the, right through the ring. So that's the is trigger aspect of the collider. All right, and as you can see, I can still hit the ring and it'll bounce right off, which is what we want. Um, but as you can see, the score isn't increasing, okay? Uh, and so what we wanna do is fix that through our scripts. And finally, we get to talk about our script functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new script. I'm going to create a new script that's going to be attached to my um, cannonball. And we're going to call this script cannonball. All right. Now, before I forget, I'm going to want to put this on my cannonball prefab. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. So I have my cannonball prefab there, and I want to attach that script I just created to it just so I don't forget and wonder why things aren't working. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so let's open up that script from Visual Studio. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to open it up. Here we go. So we're just going to do two script functions, and these script functions are going to be as follows. The first one is going to be our on trigger enter. So we're going to do void on trigger enter, and we're going to pass a parameter, which is a collider and we're gonna call that collider call, okay? And then our second script function is going to be on collision enter. Collision, uh, actually this is gonna take a collider parameter and we'll call that one call too. Okay, so just to reiterate, this script function is going to send trigger events. And then the on collision enter is going to send collision events. Okay, so you might you might guess that what we're going to do in this method is going to pertain when the ball passes through the ring. What we're going to do in this method is what's going to pertain to when the ball hits the ring. Okay, so essentially here we want to add points. Okay. So here we want to add points. And here we want to notify the player that they did not receive points. Okay. So I think that makes sense, right? Uh, and so how are we going to do this? What, what are we going to do to accomplish this? How do we know essentially what ring we pass through based on this collision or this trigger uh, event information? 
Okay, well the answer to that is we're going to access, since we're, since we're getting a collider parameter, we want to access this collider, uh, this collider's game object tag. Okay, so what we can do is run a switch statement and say switch call dot tag. Okay, so what we're doing is we're saying if we pass through a trigger, um, we're going to find that collider. We're going to find that trigger collider, and we're going to look at what game object that collider is attached to. Okay, so we're saying switch collider tag. Okay, and each each game object can have its own tag. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, so we're going to do the sim uh, similar thing here in the on collision enter. We're going to do a switch on the call dot tag. I have this mixed up. Okay, collider a collider parameter on the on trigger. It's actually a collision parameter on the on collision. Okay. And for some reason the collision doesn't have a member for tag, so we actually have to say call dot game object dot tag. Okay, and this is going to accomplish the same thing as this. All right, so the problem is we don't have any tags to access right now. So let's go back to Unity. And as you can see on each game object here, if we click on any game object, we have a tag here. And most, and by default, they're going to be um, untagged. Okay. So what we want to do is add tags to these rings. So the first ring is a red ring. Okay, and then let's see, the second ring is a green ring, and the third ring is yellow. Okay, so first ring is red, second ring is green, third ring yellow. Okay, so what we want to do is start adding some tags. And our tags are going to be red ring. Okay, so we have a red ring, and then a green ring, and a yellow ring. Okay, so this is how we add tags. Again, to add tags, you just click on an object, you go to tag, drop down, and you can click add tag down here. Okay, now let's see, the, the ring that we're clicked on now is a red ring. Okay, so what we wanna do is go to tag and say red ring. Then we come up to our green ring, and we wanna select the green ring tag. And then we come up to our yellow ring, and we wanna select the yellow ring tag. Okay, so each of these tags will correspond to that game object. Now what we can do is go back to our script. We can come back to our script and access those with our switch statement. Okay, so we're switching the colliders tag and we're gonna say case red ring break. Okay, and we're gonna do this for each tag that we just created. Green ring and yellow, okay. And let's go ahead and copy and paste this code right here. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Basically, we want to increment the score value, okay? And we also want to send a message uh, to the player that lets them know how many points they just scored. Well, I already set up a script. I'll go ahead and show it to you really quickly. It's a, uh, it's a static script that we can access these various components from. I'm not going to talk about any UI elements in this tutorial as it, um, it doesn't pertain to the topic, but basically we have these static variables that we can access from the script and modify the score accordingly. Okay, so go ahead and take a look at that if you need it. I'm gonna go back to Cannonball, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna access the script. I'm gonna say score tracker dot, uh, let's see, what is the name of that method? Update score. And then I'm gonna insert the value that, that I wanna be added to the score. Okay, so if we go through the red ring, that's the largest. We only want to update the score with one. And I want to add a message. So score tracker dot update message. And I'm gonna say uh, you have scored, or I'll just say you scored a point. Okay. I'm gonna copy and paste this code and change some values for each ring that we pass through. I'll add two points for the green ring, that's the middle one, and then three points for the yellow ring, that's the top one, which is the smallest. Okay, and I'll update the messages there. Now if we hit, if we if we don't pass through the ring, this is what the on collision enters for. If we hit the ring, uh, then we're gonna send a collision event, and what we wanna do is send a message to the player that lets them know, hey, you just hit this ring and you didn't score any points. 
So I'll say you hit the red ring, no points for you. I'll copy and paste this and I'll change the color here, which is all we need to change. So I'll change that to green, change this to yellow. Okay, so if, if we did everything right here, then uh, the game should be working properly. So let's go ahead and go back to Unity. Let's run the game and maximize. Let's see, I have an error here. Okay, clear that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the game and hope it works. So I'm gonna be able to shoot through the rings. Okay, so that worked. So I scored one point for the, for the largest uh, red ring. And let's go ahead and try to hit the ring itself, okay? So you hit the red ring, no points for you. Okay, so that's exactly what we wanted. Let's try to get through this green ring here. I haven't been practicing this a lot, so forgive me if I can't do this very well. Okay, so we just hit the yellow ring, no points for you. Let's try to hit that green ring. Oh. You scored two point. Okay. Um, okay, you hit the green ring, no points for you. I didn't score any points there. Let's try to get through this yellow ring. Oh, first try, very nice. Okay, so I actually hit the yellow ring and I passed through it. So it looks like it left off with that message there that I didn't get points. Let's see if I can actually get straight through it. I'd be impressed if I could. Okay, but you guys get the idea. So with these, the green and the red one, it's a little bit easier to tell that it, it is working properly. Um, so that's basically the lesson on those two script functions on collision enter and on trigger enter. I hope this tutorial is very helpful, helpful to you guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions about it, go ahead and feel free to comment in the comment section. Uh, if you guys like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We're going to be putting out a lot more stuff coming up in the future on Unity and web development. As always, this has been a Renaissance Coders tutorial, and thanks for watching.